Hello, my lovely little dingoes. I'm just assuming you all are dingoes. I'm a dingo, you're a dingo, they're a dingo, you know what I mean? Welcome back to the show. Thank you for being here. My name is Ashley, and this is Divine Dingo. I am currently sitting on the floor of a tiny house in Mariposa, California, in the middle of, I don't know how many acres, lots of acres of property with a sore shin from when a rooster um, came at me today. And I'm currently rubbing my sore shin. My feet are dirty, my skin is tan, and my heart is full, my friends. I, shit, I'm at a hippie commune, I think. I think that's what you call it. I'm calling it a hippie farm. I told my dad about it, and he was like, it sounds like it's a cult. And, uh, you know, it could be a cult. But I have yet to be pressured into staying longer than the two weeks that I agreed to. And I haven't had to drink anything funny. So uh, my mind is definitely all over the place. And I've definitely taken, you know, naked. (laughs) I was gonna say I've taken naked showers with people. But like, I think that that shower means naked. I don't know. What do you guys think? Naked shower? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Are you naked in showers? I'd like to know. So I haven't released a podcast episode in a month. I meant to release one with Jessica Lynn, um, known as Jessica and Oscar, two weeks ago, a week and a half ago. I don't fucking know. Um, But in Jessica's nature, the recording was not usable and I'm not saying it's Jessica's fault obviously but like a I think when Jessica has been on a podcast with Jessa it's like they can never get a recording done in one take in the first take and I, I kind of knew that going into it but I, I did not anticipate that happening with us and she had mentioned there was an echo in her headphones and I was like it's probably not that big of a deal and she literally sat through like an hour and 45 minutes of an echo had no idea how annoying it was for her until I went back and I listened to our recording and her whole recording was an echo. And, um, so anyways, I heard, we had talked and we didn't, we decided not to release that interview. So I'm going to get together with them again, do a, another episode because they're amazing and I want to talk to them more and share our conversation. So Anyways, um, I've been on the road now. I left Eugene on the 31st of, 31st of March, and I am currently, like I said, Mariposa, California. I'm here for a few more days, and then I'm heading to Southern California for 16 days, and then headed east, taking my time. I think I'm going to spend the summer in New Mexico, so... Yeah, I my goal is to at least get one episode out a month. Actually, my, my goal is, is to stay on the schedule of two episodes a month every other week. So I would like to do that because I love doing this and I like reaching goals, but I am a manifester in human design. So we'll see what happens. Um, but I was uh, blessed, I guess, with a surprise meeting and a surprise guest. Uh, I don't know if it's, yeah, I was just surprised by this person that entered my life, I guess. I don't know how many days ago, honestly, all the days are melting together, but we were all at the hippie commune having dinner in like our common area. And I knew that we were getting a new person coming to the farm and in walks this person And I was like, you are a person, a human, I see you there. (laughs) Like, I didn't really think anything other than we have a new person and they have a body and that's cool. And then, uh, I don't know, sat down 20 minutes, you know, as a group, we were talking and I asked somebody if they'd listened to, we were talking about, like, I think I wanted to ask if somebody had seen the Midnight Gospel. So I asked about Duncan Trussell and then this person whose name is Ava their eyes lit up and they were like, yeah, I listened to Duncan Trussell. And I was like, cool. And then I was like, my friend Jessa was just on 
uh, Duncan's podcast. And she was like, Jessa Reed. I know Jessa Reed. And I said, bitch, what? She's like, yeah, I'm in the soberish community. And I said, bitch, what? And then she's like, yeah, I'm a, I used to be a patron of Jessa. And I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm that Ashley from the live streams. Like I'm the, the annoying Ashley that Jessa talks shit to. And she's like, oh my God, blah, blah, blah. So anyways, we are both in the soberish community and this farm is literally in the middle of nowhere. The fact that Ava walked through that door and we both knew, we basically knew one another. Like we were talking about everybody in the community, readings that we've gotten, like mutual friends. It, it's it been a whirlwind. And um, so as the time has gone on, I've been talking with Ava, learning a bit about her past and um, her abilities, her intuition. Um, and I was like, you have to fucking come on my podcast because these conversations are amazing and I love you and I love this. So I had Ava on today. We sat in the tiny house and we recorded. I'm so excited to share this episode with you guys. Ava is, cannot be defined. She does not want to be defined and she cannot be defined, but she works with bodies. Like she can hear people's bodies, her own body. She's really talked a lot about the solar plexus and uh, your power center. And ever since being around her, I've been really noticing my solar plexus and where my power is at. And oh God, we've just had conversations from everything to like conditioning, programming, um, being fucking an alien, being an animal, she has memories of, you know, being on this planet 2000 years ago. Her mind is beautiful. Her energy is beautiful. This conversation is natural and amazing. And I just feel like, I don't know if I've even fully grasped the fact that the soberish community member just walked into the hippie commune. And now I have a friend who is amazing. And now I have a fucking awesome podcast interview to share with you guys. I'm so excited. So I hope that this intro did her justice. And if it didn't, guess what? You have an hour long conversation to listen to where you'll probably fall in love with Ava just like I did. So without further ado, let us all give a roaring welcome to Ava Frizzell. Sorry if I said your name wrong, Ava. Cool. We're here. Hey. Hey. Ah. Um, so I want you, would you be willing, would you be willing to talk about, um, like what animal communication looks like for you or then like what, like animal, just talk about your experience with animals and what that's like. Oh, oh God. Yeah. I almost feel like animal communication was like a, a superpower I got conditioned out of. Mm-hmm. which is a really sad, um, sad thing for me. When I was, I think between the ages of zero and 10, I just like loved animals better than people. I spent all my free time with animals. My family didn't have any, but I just like, uh, was always with them and was always listening. Um, and then I think there was like a period from like age 10 to age 15 where I got made fun of for like oh, she's a tree hugger, she likes animals better than people, and Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of, like, coded, coded, like, uh, people on this planet who are meant to work with animals get that kind of, like, social targeting, Mm -hmm. and then they get, they get shy about their gifts. I mean, that clearly didn't work on you if it happened, Mm. um, (laughs) but I, I really stopped talking to animals, stopped engaging with that realm in the way that I had, and I'm connecting to it more and again now, probably through through other communicators, other psychic people who, who are here to service animals. But um, animals, I think animals taught me boundaries. Mm-hmm. I think seeing how unapologetically an animal goes after what it wants and like uh, bites when it gets what it doesn't want 
helped me come into like my own naturalness. Mm-hmm. So I love them. Mm-hmm. I love them. I definitely, I think I was a ton of different animals in past lives. And they're, they're like my most common guide, I think. They come to me in like dreams and mm-hmm. visions and yeah. Is it like a certain animal that comes to you? Um, I have a jaguar. Definitely a jaguar guide comes to me a lot. Um, and she helps me with boundaries. She comes to protect my, uh, inner child, my three-year-old. Um, she like forms a circle around my three-year-old with her body and, um, dragons for sure, especially when I'm angry. Mm. Um, when I feel, when I'm going through my life, like, traveling, and I feel like someone's in my space, especially, like, a man mm-hmm. who, you know, creepy vibes, um, I energetically send my dragons on them. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't hurt them. It's just, like, um, it makes my aura, like, very threatening, and I find that people fuck with me less, mm-hmm. which is, it's, for me, that's important. Yeah. Um, and oh what else unicorns for sure yeah oh my god yeah um i've heard unicorns and dragons are from the same realm yeah like and they're both like from the angelic realm that makes a lot of sense to me yeah yeah i i was obsessed with this movie growing up called the last unicorn it's like this cheesy weird sad 80s fantasy movie Mm -hmm. um and i like identified with the last unicorn it's like a unicorn who um to protect her a magician turns her into a human and she when she's in her unicorn body she's this like immortal wise like beautiful boundary like Mm -hmm. you know no one fucks with her she's just like an absolute self-loving goddess horse (laughs) and then she gets turned into a human and she spends like the second half of the movie like um like feeling like lost and depressed and like why am I here I'm forgetting myself I'm in this like mortal body and and just like thinking about when she was a unicorn and I think when I was a child I identified with like the human version Mm -hmm. like I I was coming to terms with like what does it mean to be in a mortal body even though I'd done it hundreds of times I was still like this this like feels odd to me and like why am I here and I I remember when I was something else but I I don't have have it Mm -hmm. concretely Mm -hmm. yeah so when you were a kid you knew that you had lives like what was it your yeah because I know I've heard like different people in the community talk about like they knew when they were younger yeah you know and I don't know I think that with me I I would, like, walk into the woods and I would know that I could, like, I would talk to the trees and talk to the animals and, and the natural world. But I I don't know if in my mind, consciously, I was, like, because I used to be on yeah. this earth. And so, I, I, yeah, I wonder what that looked like for you as a kid. I don't remember if I explicitly thought that. I'm, let me... I know that I... I really, I knew that I had had wings once and I knew that I still had them in the non-physical and I knew I was, when I was six, I fully identified as a fairy. Like I told people I was a fairy. Um, I don't think, I feel like as kids, we don't think about it in that categorical way of like this is this life and that was that life I think Mm, mm -hmm. I just remember things being so blurry and like following their own logic and I actually think that that that's closer to how like higher dimensional spirits perceive it like I don't think they're as much thinking about like one life versus another life it's Mm -hmm. all this kind of non-linear divergent flow Mm -hmm. so I, I feel like as, as a kid, and maybe a lot of us as kids, we're just um, processing it like that without the linear mm-hmm. imposed stuff. Yeah, that makes sense because I think as I get older, or as I got older, 
I wanted to put things into boxes and put things into categories. But yeah. when, and I think like there was some, there was some like, cause I'm so much, I have so much air in my chart. So I have, there's so much mind going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have equal, if not more water in my chart. So it was like, I always felt like I was like battling the two, yes. you know, should I be more in my head or in my heart? And I think that when I was younger, I was all like in my, in my heart. And so I guess I, when I hear other people talk about like when I was a kid, I was talking to spirits and I was like, get me off this planet. You know, it's like, I wasn't, I don't think I was that cognitive about it because, but I also have always felt really connected to the earth. So I've never really wanted to leave the earth. I liked, I liked the idea of space when I was younger. I still love all the planets, but I, I, as a kid, I always wanted to go, like, more into the earth. Like, I wanted more courage to... I just I just wanted to, to, to be comfortable, like, in the woods. Like, I just always wanted to be, like, naked in the woods. So I... I feel that. And I think, like, with talking to you about... Like, when you, when you first got here to the hippie commune. Because <laughs> that's where we are. <laughs> that's how we met. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, we were talking about... I don't know. I guess there's a part of me that, that like wants to be more galactic or, you know, like woo and like hanging out in the higher dimensions. And I think that I, I have an idea that's, that's currently crumbling of what that looks like. Mm. And I, I think that my idea of it is like romanticizing what it looks like. Does that make sense? Like the galactic stuff. Yeah. And like hanging out in the higher dimensions because I think I'm always doing that. Totally. And I think, but I, I guess when I hear other people's perspective of perspectives of it, I'm like, it sounds fucking wild. Like it doesn't sound like my experience, but like, yeah. I'm also really connected to the earth. So I'm really grounded. And so I think that that is just part of my, my abilities and part of my superpowers. I mean, I think like, well, your mission Opta, is like, tie like intimately tied to nature Mm -hmm. and so is my like the second I came in I was like in preschool I remember just yeah loving nature Mm -hmm. and wanting to be close to nature but I think yeah I think it's like you said like I mean fae fae are non-physical beings Mm -hmm. right and like they're also nature spirits Mm -hmm. and I feel like a lot of like nymphs and like maybe spirits that you're tapped into are like so earthly and they're also in and out of dimensions and I feel like that's maybe that's like a realm that that some people are just in and it's not like all the way up there and it's not you know dissolving into an Arcturian Mm -hmm. but it's still yeah it's still that like communication Mm -hmm. I think of I think of Faye and like all winged winged creatures as like the communication bridge between earth and sky Ooh. So they, they're like the go-betweens and that's their, mm. their power. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's like, um, I was reading a book actually about animals and it was the first time that the concept of liminal spaces got brought up. Oh yeah. And, and like what, and I remember like reading it and the way that they were talking about it was like, um, meeting an animal where it's like both of you, dis- it's almost like you dissolve from your physical bodies and like meet each other in this other space. And he called it like the, um, the, the uh, some, it's like a, a heart space, but he, he, mm. he, the author felt like it was between the animal and the person. And that's where like you were meeting. Yeah. Um, and then he, he called it a liminal space. And I was like, I really like that word. I really like that concept. And then I started, looking more into um, a world that I don't always have the right words for, spiritual, paranormal, occult, whatever. It's like they're all, we all like, in all of those worlds, they talk about liminal spaces. Mm -hmm. And then I started thinking about it more in like my, my energy is like shifting. My energy is fluid. Um, And that's something that I've put into my shadow because I, I think that it's bad or I have thought that it's bad, but it's like, I kind of live in these liminal spaces. No, it, it's a gift. And it's also yeah. the truth. I mean, it's kind of like what we said, like there isn't the, dis- the sharp distinction between lives in that, that we say there is always like obviously birth and death, but I think everything's liminal. There isn't the sharp distinction between 5d, 4d and 3d that we impose. Like mm-hmm. all of that's kind of illusory. And I feel like your energy is just an expression of like, everything's liminal yeah you know yeah 
Yeah, I think that that's more of maybe humans collective desire and then like my personal desire to like put things in boxes. And I think that that's also something that as I go deeper or I, I'm more on this path and I have more conversations like you and I have, it's like these, these categories are just dissolving in my yeah. mind. And there's such like freedom in that. And I used to think when I was a kid, like I always wanted to like know who I was. Like I always wanted oh, to like girl. know <laughs> like what's what's my favorite color? What's my favorite band? Who's my best friend? And there's some. And there you had like multiple a, and it changed. And then you were yeah. like, who? And I, and I thought it was bad. I was yeah. like, Ashley, just fucking pick something. Oh, my you know? God. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't say the F word when I was a kid. But, <laughs> you know, once I learned it, now it's <laughs> every other word. But, um, yeah, I... And now that even when I was an adult, like before I went on this trip where like you and I just happened to meet, I went through like this, this whole fucking like downward spiral of why can't I just like be happy in one town? Why can't I just be happy with one job? Like I just, it was so my, my truth is, was frustrating me. Like my, who I am and my deepest, I was upset about. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's Mm -hmm. just cause it doesn't fit into like, you know society third dimensional whatever you want to call like just day to day get a nine to five and and it's so funny because I it's so funny for me to be able to to give animal communication readings talk about the fucking wild shit I talk about on this podcast and still be like I'm bad because I don't fit into society you know (laughs) like a part of me is like so cool with it and then another part of me is so hesitant oh my gosh yeah 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 the conditioning is always kind of there yeah. Even uh, and you like divest from it when you start to question it and when you get more validation from other people, but it's always just like there to look at. Right. And you're like, "Hello, old friend." And I think like cuz the moment that you and I like really sat down and started talking, like I could like see your power. And then we had this conversation earlier, but it's like then and I felt like you and I were recognizing each other for like our power outside of power. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then it's like, we find ourselves being insecure or second guessing ourselves oh, or yeah. like feeling like, I mean, I always, it's, I always break it down to a really simple question. Am I bad or am I good? And sometimes it really is just that simple for me. And, um, but I feel like you and I have both on this farm and in this community, we're just like, is this the right choice? Is this, this, is it that? Mm-hmm. And then when we just sit down and it's just us and we just talk or us yes, with Misha and Eli and Yada, but it's just like, we're just so in our power. And I guess that just, that goes to show what you just said, that conditioning is just always... It's always there. It's just there. I don't know if the goal is to like, do you, I don't, because a part of me is like, I want to get rid of it, you yeah. know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, what you said, we were like doing a whole compliment circle last ah, night with so our good. group. And what you said about me was like, Like, you see me as this, like, very powerful divine being, and you see me, like, fumbling around in my humanness and, like, doing stupid shit and, like, outsourcing (laughs) my power, being shy, like, Uh you know, I see you, like, overthinking, Uh blah, 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 doing your little human Ashley thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's, like, the perpetual paradox, and I think we, like, we came down to this realm, this this earth realm and it's not just that we came into a denser realm because that for me that's not that's not like the hang-up the hang-up is that it's a distorted realm like Mm. we're this could have been a three-dimensional paradise planet and I think that's where we're headed I don't think we're trying to make this realm less dense than it is so much as less distorted Mm -hmm. so my mission was never to like freaking drop density or ascend out it's just to I came into this body and I came in with strong coding from my my oversoul, like my divine being that knows it's perfect and, and blah, blah, blah. And I came in with all the ancestral trauma, all the distortions, all the things that, um, all the wounding that makes me vulnerable to people who uh, try to fuck with me, all the things in me that try to fuck with people from a place of wounding, like... I came into all of that and um, I'm I'm in this like eternal process of rehabilitating my fallen parts. So I think mm. we're all we're all fallen and some of us um, have that divine presence and so we're able to see the fallen parts as things that need rehabilitation. 
So I never, I don't think I ever try to get rid of them, but I really like to, like, and I think you do this too, like, I just have them laid out in front of me all the time, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and every time I get triggered or insecure or confused, I make sure that I stop and notice that part. Like, I see it physically. Like, I see myself as this fragmented thing. Mm -hmm. And there's, like, the source, the part of me that's divine and in my power. And then there's all these fragments, like Ava, the the, um, perpetrator. Mm -hmm. Ava, the murderer, because I've murdered people in past lives. We all have. Ava, the lover. Ava, the animal rescuer. Ava, the animal killer. You Mm -hmm. know, Ava, the exalted feminine Ava the distorted feminine Mm. like I see all my inversions and I I really feel and maybe this is Gemini energy and maybe it's the open G center and just the Mm -hmm. fact that I feel like not one fixed thing but I see myself as a a kaleidoscope of millions of different beings and I have to constantly be in communication with all of them Because that's, I feel like that's part of the the rehabilitation process. Mm-hmm. And just like, I don't like all of them, obviously, mm-hmm. but I, I feel like I can understand every single one of them, you mm-hmm. know, like I know where each one comes from mm-hmm. and I think that's enough. And some of them, um, turned into gifts when I, when I talk to them properly, it's mm-hmm. like, there is a process of like purifying their their essence and they they became they came out of their fear and they and they became helpers Mm -hmm. and I think I mean this is shadow work but Mm -hmm. it's like a different play on it yeah but I think this is what I'm here to do and what a lot of people are here to do is rehabilitate um and and uh burn through like distortions and get get our wounded parts back towards our own inner source Mm -hmm. um so we play the human game and we <laughs> we do dumb shit and then we reflect on it. <laughs> and then we're like, why did I do that? Oh, it's because I, you know, this happened to me six years ago or two lives ago. And mm-hmm. and I want love now and I don't know how to get it. And yeah. All that. Yeah. yeah. And with the distortion, um, like your... Like, rather than this being, like, just a dense reality, do you see it as dense and distorted or, like, more distorted than dense? Or is it, like, the same... We're all just trying to explain the same experience that we're having in the third dimension. Well, I do think they're two different things. Dense and distorted, totally different. Um, It is very dense here. And a lot of us aren't used to it. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, it's it's just such a... It's... I feel like... It's crazy when I've, like, zoomed out and felt around, like, where things are in the universe. The amount that's just, like, concentrated, even just in this body, Mm -hmm. is, like, this is a whole planet. Like, this is an entire galaxy condensed into just atoms that are so fucking close together. Um, So that's something that's, like, you know, it can be weird to navigate physically for Mm -hmm. some of us, but... The distortion is present on every single dimension, Mm -hmm. even the one that's like one level down from source. And I think the the distortion is what I, I, I attribute our misery and our suffering on this planet, which I don't, I don't think it's part of the experience, but I think it's just something we have to go through at this point. I see that as this, I see the distortion as the source of the misery. Mm, um and the mm-hmm. distortion means like oh for me it's just like normalized abuse and normalized things that are deemed correct and okay in this realm that are just not aligned with like god's plan for us mm-hmm. um and i think yeah, any any things we were taught, the way we were taught to relate to each other, all codependency is distortion. Um, a lot of, you know, shadow spirituality is distortion. Um, the way we relate to food and nature is in distortion. The way we understand feminine and masculine energy is in distortion. Yeah, it's just like, it feels like distortion is 
like the main experience that we're all having and we're just trying to like give it another name like give it give it I feel like it's like we're experiencing distortion like talking to you this is what I'm coming to and then it's like but we're like going in circles but it's oh but it's this over here that we're experiencing oh but it's this over Mm -hmm. here and it's I think that there's power in accepting that it is just distorted it's just distortion yeah I feel like then it's like okay okay rather than it like being because a part of me does resonate with like after up until talking to you like here to suffer you know suffer I guess suffer for the experience and Mm -hmm. I think that that was freeing to me um and maybe just not even suffer but like I don't know if I if I'm insecure or if I'm having an emotion that I might label as negative. I'm oh, like, yeah, this that's is not an distortion. Yeah, that yeah, I mm-hmm. agree with you. Yeah, yeah. But like, um, looking at distortion, like when you were talking, I was thinking about like the relationship with animals, and like it is. I just wonder how they experience distortion. Yeah, and I wonder if they experienced it before they were living so closely with humans you know that's an interesting question because they've received so much of our cruelty Mm -hmm. i don't know and they like have our diseases now like they get cancer they have our diseases i know they've the animals on this planet and the the biology of this planet has been greatly tampered with by higher dimensions Mm -hmm. um and i know that there are some there are some ways that this ecosystem works that aren't you know, so I think the animal realm is also just as distorted. Mm-hmm. Like they, they themselves not, you know, obviously the individual animals are innocent and they're not to blame, but their, their ecosystem and, and like the dynamics and the relationships within their ecosystem, I see distortion there. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's very sad. Yeah. And I think blame goes in that category of like blame, shame, obligation. It's just kind of like, totally. they're like things that. But we do, we always, and sometimes I even look for somebody to like blame. Like today we had a dog um, grab one of the chickens Mm. and I was like, how do, I just want to, like I immediately, if any kind of situation arises, I'm like, okay, how do I fix it? Like, what can I do? And I felt like with the, with obviously with the animals, it's like, okay, what can, what can I do here? How can I fix it? And it's like. In my mind, like, it wasn't the dog's fault. It's obviously not the chicken's fault. It's not entirely the human's fault. Mm -hmm. But a part of me, like, goes to the humans. And I, because I feel like, ultimately, it's like this energy of of healing our disservice to animals. And I see it um, manifest in very little um, incidents or situations constantly. And I think that this was a really good example of that. And so once I took that walk and I came back and I'm like, how have we failed the dogs in order for them to like not, not have boundaries around the chickens. And then I, and I was like, you know, I told everybody, I said, when the dog runs by the rooster, who who likes to jump on us and put its spurs into us. And so we're all a little scared of Richard. We reward it. Yeah. We're yeah. like, oh, thank you so much. And it's like, it's, we don't, we're just like, we're busy. We're busy minded. So we're just like, oh, cute. The dog scared the chickens away. Thank you for that. And then when the dogs chase the chickens, we're like, don't chase the chickens. And then the dogs, especially canines, they, they look to humans. We are their leaders. Right. And they, we have, we have asked, brought them into our lives and now, and now they need us to lead them. Right. And I think that so many people, uh, I don't know, forget that, romanticize that. But it was, it was just like a frustrating situation. And every, every time something like that happens, I feel like a, a human that is, um, I don't know, uh, avoiding shadow work or not in their power. And I don't want to judge them, but it's like, I, I see myself in people where they immediately are like, that dog needs to know when did, when, you know, that dog needs like a good, like, you know, beating or something to get it or that, you know, and I don't like it when they're like that dog, you know what I mean? Or like that, anything that, that animal, I mean, you know, Richard, the, the rooster fucking jumped at me, scared the shit out of me. And now I'm a little worried, but then about, you know, I'm a little hesitant around him, a little scared, but then there are times where it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to dominate Richard. You know, that's not like my energy. And then some people here are like, Oh, you just got to shove a shovel in his face and he won't do it again. it's like, I don't, I guess, I don't know. I just, every, I'm just always thinking about how humans have failed animals and I see it everywhere. And it's even with like, 
you know, chickens aren't supposed to produce as many eggs as they do. Mm. And even though people are like, oh, it's backyard chickens. I, I, and I used to, I used to eat it. I'm like, happy chickens, happy eggs. And mm-hmm. then I saw like a video and apparently like chickens have also been bred to overproduce eggs. So it's not a natural production of their eggs. They're not supposed to lay. You're not supposed to get a dozen eggs out of like six chickens every we, day or something. We do to animals what higher dimensional you know alien beings did to us and animals Mm. we control them we breed them we dominate them and then we scapegoat them for doing for doing shit that's what you that's the distortion you were pointing to is scapegoating yeah Mm -hmm. like it's our it yeah we did we did teach the dogs to misbehave around the chickens Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. we did that and that's also how we treat kids we're like we see a kid do something that we don't like and we're like, oh, it's the kid. But it's like we taught the kid. Yeah. You know? And yeah. then we were taught, we were taught what we were taught. Mm-hmm. It's all that distortion is just like bad fucking teaching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it comes, it, you know, you can trace it up and up or down and down. Um, and then ultimately you just trace it back to like the original wound of this planet, all the abandonment and separation and the twistedness of getting fragmented Mm -hmm. and that's where it comes from do you have like i know that you because i've you've talked about some like past lives and history of the planet history of humans and i know you said that some of it is in downloads some of it's in research yeah but i'm wondering like what what do you know about a time where like maybe there was was there ever a time on earth where there was no distortion and what did that or yeah what do you think about that um I'm, I don't feel like I'm, I feel like I know nothing about this, even though I have, you know, little trivia knowledge thingies. Yeah. But, uh, I, I mean, I think there is a parallel possibility, um, like a timeline where there's no distortion, but I, like, as far as where we are now and tracing it back, I don't think there was a time when there was no distortion. I think there was a a possibility and a plan for Earth to be this, like, paradise where humans were the stewards of animals and innocence and every... I mean, this is what paradise is for me, is, like, each person living out their God code, like, their blueprint and their human design and their, Mm -hmm. like, how they're meant to live and everyone respecting that because we all know that, like, the good of, of one free person is the good of everyone Mm -hmm. I think that's that's where I'm I'm working towards now Mm -hmm. like in myself and and with people around me but I don't think that that got to happen um in this timeline Mm -hmm. sadly yeah yeah so you think that there are like collective timelines and individual timelines because I think when I guess when I heard people talk about collective timelines, collectively shifting to another timeline, things like that. Yeah. Um, and, I, and then I, when I see my own timelines and when I've had other people read my energy and see my timelines, it's like um, mine are like, it's like a web rather than some people see you have like 20 different roads in front of you. Mine is like a web of endless. So anyways, I guess I'm just... I, I, and I'm, I, I know you don't know, have, have all the answers, but yeah. I, your perspective on timelines, what have timelines like looked like for you? Do you consciously feel when you shift one? Mm. Do you feel, have you tapped into that? Yeah. Yeah. Like individually. Yeah. For and, yourself and. Yeah. I've definitely, um, I do believe in timelines. I'm still working out, like, how I believe in it, but I've definitely felt that, oh, and this has been such a a thing for me in the past couple months, because I've, uh, I was so stuck, I felt so stuck at the end of 2020, Mm -hmm. um, because I was in a frequency of fear, making myself small, Mm -hmm. um, and I would, I would have these periods where I would really heal something, and I would, I would be so close to source. I would be in that zone of like, everything is going to work out for me. It's safe to be completely powerful. And I could feel my future change when I did that. Mm. And I would, I would get ready to make these like bold moves and and take leaps. Like I was going to fully move out of my house by April 1st. Mm -hmm. 
And then I get into doubt and then I, I switch back off the timeline. Mm-hmm. So for me, I have, I've had trouble sustaining my highest timeline. Mm-hmm. And part of that is um, doubt and um, over-reliance on like spiritual knowledge and like psychic information outside of myself. Like that's one of my timeline traps. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I timeline hop like every second, like depending mm-hmm. on the frequency I embody. If I'm, if I'm embodying love, my timeline can change like that. But if mm-hmm. I don't sustain it, it changes back before I get to the action part. And yeah. that's, it's a struggle for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've also found there's like so many different timelines and I'm really, I feel, did we talk about organic and artificial and like, did? Well, I don't think so. Okay. Well, I've, I think... Something I'm focusing on now is um, making sure that the timeline that I'm on is, like, so... I don't know how to articulate this. Like, I could I could get on any timeline I want, right? And mm-hmm. there's things that I, I could be like, oh, I want to make, like, this much money or I want this kind of car and, like, get on that timeline and... Um, And there's this feeling that if I did that, I would, like, without checking back in with my, my God code, Mm -hmm. um, I could get kind of far away from my God code pursuing things that I think I want. Mm -hmm. And I think a trap that I've noticed that I get on and that friends get on is manifesting a timeline that pleases the false self. Mm. So we get this idea, okay, I, yeah, I'm a God. I'm a creator. I can do anything. I'm powerful. I can twist and change this matrix and make it what I want and so I have this idea of what it means to be happy I want you know a a nice house I I don't actually want that (laughs) I don't know what these what people (laughs) um I want to make fucking 15k I don't like 15k 15k a month Uh, (laughs) (laughs) you know I want to make this much money I want to have an amazing partner not, and none of those are bad aspirations, but for a lot of people, it's in service to a false self. So some people are Ooh. amazing manifestors, but they're not happy because they didn't actually come here to manifest a bunch of shit. A lot of us came here to break the matrix, and I think a, a spiritual trap that I see myself sometimes and loved ones falling into is that we're like, oh, it's a matrix and I I can work the matrix instead of I can actually come home to myself and just Mm. leave the matrix altogether Mm -hmm. and maybe Mm -hmm. I won't get what I want as fast but what I want wouldn't have necessarily made me happy anyway yeah so for me there's there's this thing that I've tapped into and it's 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 in my heart like the heart is the home for it Mm -hmm. and it's a heart timeline and it's a god code timeline and when you're on this timeline um the details aren't Right now, they're not really as much in my control, but it's like I'm here to I'm here to clear the matrix. Mm-hmm. I'm here to clear this idea that i'm I'm supposed to beat levels and get this much and and do all that. i'm I'm like it's like manifesting myself out of the game. and I'm not man it's not manifesting. It's just coming home to like the organic unfolding of like who I actually am Mm -hmm. and that's not Mm -hmm. it's not necessarily oh I want to make this much money next month or I want this and that and it's not you know there are spiritual entities I was talking to um uh the healer I work with Jenna Mm -hmm. um and she was like yeah there are entities out there who will get you so rich like it's true that you have everything at your fingertips but it's not always in service to your God code and you're not going to feel whole unless you're in service to your God code, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, That was, I said a lot. Yeah, it was great. (laughs) What? Yeah. (laughs) I I was going to say, I talked to you a little bit about like the shadow work that came up right before my trip. I don't think I talked about it on the podcast, but I was, I decided to take a leap and just put in my 30 day notice, my 30 day, uh, at both places, my job and my apartment. And 
And I just started like planning this trip and it like seemed so um, adventurous and like, oh, I'm taking a risk and I'm so like, man, and it, like, I don't know what that sound was, but I'm so like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I am brave and I am following my dreams and all of this stuff. And I realized like two ish weeks before I left and two weeks ish weeks bef- after I made the decision to leave. So right in the middle that I was like lying to myself mm. and I was in it. It sounds like serving my false self. Yes. And yeah, I didn't well, realize yeah. I didn't. And, it, and for me, I was like, Oh, this is, I was like, Oh, I like created an identity in my head that I think that oh. people want me to be. And I realized a lot of it was centered around my parents. And I was like, Oh, I have an idea in my head of what I think that they want from me. And this idea in my head is, is, is the child version of myself, yeah. like control, like literally sitting in behind the wheel in my mind being like, well, mom likes when you do this. Dad likes when you do this. Kenny, my stepdad likes when you do this. Melissa, my sister likes when you do this. And it's like, I didn't realize that like I had my child self like at the forefront of my mind driving until like this, I don't know, it was like 1 p.m. on a Wednesday and I started going down this rabbit hole of shadow work when I was still at my nine to five and I was Mm. like, give me a fucking warning next time before I start going down this. But um, like, can I eat a sandwich first? (laughs) Um, But I I, I did, I realized I was... I was like, who, who am I serving? Who am I trying to be? And I was like, and I realized too, that this, this idea of my parents' expectations of me, while like, you shouldn't live for anybody but yourself, obviously, but that's like easier said than done when you're working through conditioning. But it was also not true. Like my parents, my parents have changed. My, my parents have evolved. Their expectations of me have dwindled. They just Mm -hmm. want me to be like they don't want me to be homeless and they want me to like have food and like n- not die a brutal death. That's pretty much their expectations of me. And then like come see them twice a year or something, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, well, they want me to have this kind of job and they want me to be this kind of person. It's like, they don't actually give a shit. Mm-hmm. I just thought that they did for so long. And then, so I was serving a false self. Totally. And I think too, like, um, we were talking about manifesting. I have so much fear programming around money from my parents yeah. and like from myself too. And, from my experiences that like when I first realized I could create reality, all I wanted to do was get money. So I'd never have to worry about money again. And I get it in like waves. Like I'll get like, Oh, an unexpected thousand dollars. I'm like, Oh shit. Like this is amazing. I can manifest money. And then all of a sudden, like, then I'm like, Oh, I'm just on that timeline now. I'm just on the timeline where I'm like in abundance. And then like my account, my, my, I'll watch my bank account go to like $20 and I'm like, Oh Mm. shit. What did I do? What's wrong? I'm off that timeline. I did something wrong. What's wrong with me. Right. And then the money goes back up and down. And then I'm realizing like now when I manifest, I mean, I was manically manifesting money, like manically manifesting financial abundance. I was doing two cup method. I was going to sleep. I was trying to do like the imagination method. Like I was trying to do all these different things. And then I realized one day that I am actually in abundance. Like I'm chasing something I'm already in. It just doesn't Ooh. look like having $30,000 in my bank account all the time. Ooh, it, yeah. it looks like when I'm about to leave for a trip I'm nervous about, one of my coworkers and my friends offering to like fill me a tank of gas. You're always provided for. It's, so it, you don't yeah. need the security. I don't need $30,000. It's 30, like you are manifesting the cushioning from a space of I'm not in a, abu- like mm-hmm. you were manifesting the cushioning instead of the abundance, right. but you were already in, like, I'm already in abundance. You're provided for. I have all the food I need. I have, un- I have a list of people that love me unconditionally. The list mm-hmm. is growing. I have a safe place to sleep. Even when I travel, like when I really sit back and look at it, I'm like, I have herbs, I have vegetables, I have my health, I have air, I have clean water. If you want something that's like in alignment with your true self, mm-hmm. it'll probably happen like this. And it does. Yeah. I manifested a fucking plant I found outside of a dumpster. <laughs> I needed like, Hello? I was like, I need some money. I got Venmo a hundred bucks. It was like, it's just, it's like, oh shit. Like abundance doesn't look like never worrying about money again. I don't think. And like, I think that it's, I don't know. Anyways, it's just, I, I, I it was like a false identity. It was something yeah. that, and it's, and it's so, I so resonated with what you said about that. It yeah. ju- I just went through that and I'm still like, healing from it now it's in the forefront of my mind I'm like who's who's steering the wheel oh my god yeah that's helpful for me because a lot of I have also have a lot of programming around money Mm -hmm. and it's also like a a thing of like underlying desperation for Mm -hmm. not having to worry 
Yeah. I don't want to worry. I don't want to worry either. Yeah. But I don't know if that's, like, the goal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or maybe we can just stop worrying. Like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I think we, we just have just to choose. stop worrying. We could literally just choose to stop worrying. And the money will come and go the same way it has been, but we just will be like, yeah, it'll come and go. Rather than being like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? What? Yeah, it's, it's literally just a choice to change your mindset. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, one day I'll just have all I need to stop worrying but it's literally just just <laughs> you could just choose to stop worrying and it's so funny that we can have like a four we're at like a 40 minute conversation now and then we come back to a really standard idea and like spirituality <laughs> it's probably in every book in this room just choose to stop worrying you know and we're just like what <laughs> we're such clowns Everyone on this planet is such a fucking clown. Why do we, like, it's, like, we think it's fucking funny to forget that we're, like, divine and can, like, have all this <laughs> shit and, like, go to all the realms. Like, we just clown around down here. Um, please talk to me about your, whatever, I mean, if you are willing to, like, your relationship to star people. <laughs> <laughs> <Lol>. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so hesitant to use standard words, but star seeds, star people, I'm a star seed. What the fuck does that even mean? I don't know. Does it? We plant seeds of stars. We're seeded. That's also that reminds me of like semen. So I <laughs> we're seeded. We're seeded into this realm. I don't want to be seeded by any men. <laughs> okay, we're not. Seed. We're not seeded. We're. I think. I think some of us are very coded. I like that word. So some of us, I I remember, I I traced this this life in a session where I can I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to Earth so I can bring this code, and I think we're coded, you know. Mm. That's yeah. Like we each have like almost like a key or a code. Like, yes. do you remember like why you wanted to bring the code or what the code served or? Yeah. Even, yeah, yeah. I mean, we just looked at Earth and we were like, it's so freaking dense over there, and it's such a hot point in the universe that uh, it it needs it, and if we can do it, it'll send like waves throughout the whole universe. Mm-hmm. Like this is where it's happening. Um, unfortunately, that also because it's so dense and because this earth is such a mirror reflection of the distortion of the universe that means it is dense with distortion Mm -hmm. so we well i i don't know about other people Mm -hmm. i was in arcturus right before this and i was having i loved arcturus it's it's great over there um not it not even arcturus is like immune to you know hijacking and stuff but Mm -hmm. um but we yeah we were like time to bring this stuff to earth and I think for me, I mean, I think I, I have a lot of codes because I'm a lot of beans in mm-hmm. one, like like you. Um, so I can't pinpoint it to one thing. I think it's like a whole architecture. But a lot of my coding that showed up as a child was like, I know the words purity and like God and stuff get so, they, they have just like a bad rap because there's mm-hmm. distortion around them. Yeah. Um, But I remember being a very, like, pure child in that I remembered in my body how it was before. Mm -hmm. And I came into this, like, very fallen world and I knew consciously that things weren't right and that things weren't in right relationship to each other, that Mm -hmm. parents and children weren't in right relationship, that, you know, um, there, I don't know, yelling and spanking children wasn't okay. I remember... When my dad spanked my brother, I, like, locked myself in the bathroom and we were about to go on a vacation and I, like, refused to come out. You know, I was very... The way we treat animals wasn't okay. Like, there were just things... I could could feel all the distortions, like, the music industry. Everything everything was just so apparent. And I think a lot of my coding is about access to, like, pure truth and being able to see all of the the things that have been twisted in this realm Mm -hmm. and just cutting through them, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I think it's been hard because um, a lot of my wounding is around fitting in Mm -hmm. and, like, Mm -hmm. a part of me saw it and was like, I can just be free of it. And then a part of me was like, wow, 
when I'm free of it, I don't belong. And I want to belong so bad. Like, Mm -hmm. I just want to be loved Mm -hmm. and validated by a community of of people, Mm -hmm. my family, my, my peers. And so there's always that. And then also, if I'm if I'm completely following my code in this realm, I'm actually not as effective because I'm I go full on hermit. You know, it's like mm. a lot of a lot of spiritual people are like, oh, I'm too pure for this world. But then that gets in the way of you actually like bringing your code to the world. Mm-hmm. So I, I accept some of the distortion mm-hmm. and I live with it. And I sometimes I just say it's not time to clear that yet. Um, but I do. I'm really passionate about everything that is false about me, I, I burn through it, Mm -hmm. you know? And when I see falsehood in the world, especially in the spiritual community, um, I, I just want to burn through to like what it, what is true Mm -hmm. and what's real. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think that's a big part of my code. And I see, I see that code in a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Like, especially, I think the people who come here want what's real, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What is, like, what is burning through it look like for you? Does that just mean, is that, like, a lot of conversation? Is it energetically? Mm-hmm. Is it, like, a... Because I have a desire, I often get a desire to, like, burn things down. That manifester yeah. gusto. Yeah. Yeah. But then I have to take a nap. <laughs> because I'm tired because I'm a manifester. Yeah. Um, I guess yeah, and it, I I I get so frustrated. Um, mm-hmm. when I want to just light a match on things that do not serve anyone, but mm. we still give so much energy to, and it's like mm. I when I was like first really tapping into like you know being from the animal realm, look like feeling into that. Like there was like a it was a about a year ago where I was just like in this phase of like how do I save every animal? Oh. How do I rescue every animal? Like, oh, there's like a load <laughs> on your shoulders. Yeah. And I'm just- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oof, yeah. And I've 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 definitely like worked on it, but it it feels defeating. It doesn't feel like yeah. I come to a good place where I accept that. No, it just feels like fuck, you know? Like it yeah. just feels defeating and there's a part of me that literally wanted to unlock every cage. Like I was thinking about every animal behind every cage. Like I was, I went to a, like a, I don't know why I did it. Cause it was traumatizing for me, but something was calling me. It was probably the animals calling to me, but I drove past on the Oregon coast on the highway 101. There was like a safari park and it was literally just like jaguars and lions, like in cages My in Oregon. In fucking Oregon. And I went in and I was like whispering to them that they can eat the humans. You know what I mean? I was just like, I was like, how do I? And I was talking to a friend of mine who kind of just dropped an idea of like, maybe it's not the physical cages that you're unlocking. That's very, that's true. Yeah. Oh my God. And I think, Ooh. yeah, right. And I was like, oh, okay. And then, and then I, I, at first I was like, fuck that. I want to physically unlock all the cages. And then I, I actually let it res like sit in and I'm still like letting it like kind of seep in and in every situation it arises differently. But I think literally just having conversations with people about animals unlocks them from the cages that we've put them in into yeah. our minds. Yes. And then once we, we get there, then all of the physical metal cages will be unlocked. And how do we unlock our inner animal from our inner cage? Mm. Cause that that's where you that's where the action happens. Damn. We can't we can try all we want, you know, social justice warriors, unlock all the cages, do things in the external. And action is important, that's why we're here in this realm. But if your inner animal is in a cage, nothing will happen. Yeah. If your wildness and your power is enclosed in if you have a dominating bully self that is, you know, abusing an mm-hmm. animal inside you, then you're not going to be able to do shit for the world. Yeah. Wow. And I've had to deal with that. A lot of my frustration and anger is about parenting. I guess children is part of my code, but like my anger at my parents and people who are like authority figures in my life who sort of, I, I blame them for stifling me. And mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, if only this person wasn't there. And then I've I've been in situations where even when they're not there, I feel I'm still in a cage. 
Like mm-hmm. I'm still mm-hmm. imprisoning the child in me. I'm still yeah. playing my dad and abusing me. And until yeah. I stop doing that, nothing's going to fucking change. And we can go as far, you know, like the people who are like terrified of like the the aliens who are taking over this planet like sh- yeah there's a lot of domination on this planet but we we solve it from inside like it's you know mm-hmm. but I also like I feel what you're saying and I like I think sometimes we get into savior complexes but a lot of times it's not that it's just like the misery of of seeing cruelty mm-hmm. and we can't do anything about it yeah yeah. I get frustrated because the animals are trying to speak to us like oh. constantly I mean, and every saying. they're using like every single way that they know how to communicate with us, their body, their, their vocalizations, um, their aggression, oh, they're yeah. using all of it. And it's like, we are not listening. We're not seeing it. And it's like, I'm guilty of it too. Like in my younger days, like I knew that my dog like wanted more time outside or like wanted to do this or that. But like I, as a teenager wanted to go hang out with my friends, but I could know that she was communicating with me Mm -hmm. and it, and it doesn't feel like woo, you know, it literally is just like the look in her eye, the way that her body, like it's literally every single resource that they have, they are using. And then when they are violent, we tell them we are bad and they are bad. And then we kill them. That's scapegoating. That's abuse. Yeah. The, the thing needs something. It's innocent. It's our responsibility yeah. We don't give it what we want, what mm-hmm. it wants, and then we say you're bad. That's what you're we bad. do to kids. Yeah, that's what we do to ourselves and our bodies. Our that's bodies. what we do to bodies. Our bodies get sick and they act up because there's, there's something, that it needs that, and we mistreated it, and mm-hmm. then we're like, oh, this fucking body, you know? Yeah. And it's it's valid frustration because it can feel, like hard to deal with the pain that comes with being in this body, but it's also like it's communication. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also get really frustrated with my body, but, and I think too, like my diet is so, it's so changed (laughs) and it's so like my friend Grace, like I, I tend to get annoyed at myself with my diet, but Grace always gives me like better language to use for it rather than like, oh, my diet's annoying or whatever. But it's like, I just actually started listening to my body and my body's like, these are the things that like fuck me up. Mm -hmm. And this is what I want. And like to other people, it's just like another thing that I'm insecure about is like, I don't like to be needy. I like to be super independent and not need anybody. But if we're like in a community, like we are now, I'm like, you know, I I don't like having to ask every person every time they cook something, is it vegan, you know, like, or is it gluten free? And it's like, I don't want to be that person, but my, it's like, it is like a challenge for me to stand up for my body. You know? Yeah. And like, you're actually carrying that's a code like that's the code of respecting spe- like specificity and mm-hmm. your blueprint in order mm-hmm. to create harm like harmony. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, and like I need per I need alone time. I need to be able to shut the door on like socializing. Yeah. So literally having a space where I can shut the door on people, you know, and like I need a, a good amount of sleep and like there's so much, um, and it's all about just respecting literally my physical body. Yep. And it's so hard because like, there's so many times where it's like, oh, there's a fun thing that I want to do, but I need, I'm not going to get a lot of sleep. Oh, fuck it. I'll survive on four hours of sleep. And I lived like that for so long or like, oh, it's not vegan. Enough. Well, I'm not, I, I don't, uh, I'm not wishy-washy with vegan food, but I'm like, oh, it's not gluten-free. Fine. Whatever. Cause I don't want to hurt somebody's feelings Yeah, that's made me food. So I'm like, dis- like I'm like You're dishonest. throwing my yeah. body to the side and it's like, I'm just so fucking, I'm, oh, I'm over it, you know? And it's like, and I think you and I were talking about like, you know, uh, I don't know if we, we weren't using this word, but like sacred rage. And it's like, I don't know if it's even fully rage. It's like very, it's boundaries. That's yeah. all it is. It's boundaries. Yeah. It's and I, boundaries. I guess I feel angry when I, I disrespect my own boundaries. Totally. And then I, and then I'm like, there's a, there's an instinct of me to be like, cause it's you. And then it's actually like, but it's me. Like, I'm not, I'm not frustrated with you because you didn't cook a vegan gluten-free thing for me for five meals in a row. I mean, come on, bitch, cook me something <laughs> I can eat. But still it's like, I'm just, I'm like mad at me for not being like, actually, would you be willing to cook me something on the side? Oh my God. Yeah. And it's just, and I'm like, I like, I shudder at the thought of being a person who like says what she needs, you know, because it's like, I think it just comes back to rejection. Like somebody yeah. could just be like, no, you're but too needy. And I don't like you. But if somebody did reject me, I, at this point, I'd probably be like, 
damn, I mean, all right, you know, I mean, yeah. fuck it, I'll go cook myself a meal or something, but, yeah. um, anyways, I don't know, I feel like I just went on a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> Boundaries, man. <laughs> no, I, like, I feel all of that really hard. And boundaries here, like, I mean, in this little community that we have is, like, I, I, when we were doing, like, the compliment circle last night, which was, like, it was really, really great. I used to make fun of people that were, like, this lovey-dovey, but now oh, that I do it. Oh, it's so fun. Oh, it's so good. Oh. You were tearing up complimenting people. You were like, I, I love, love complimenting. Because I have a, I have a wound. I, like, withhold how much I love people. Oh, so creating that space for it was healing for you. And I still was withholding. I think I I feel like people would be scared if if they knew how much I loved them. I love your eyelashes and that (laughs) freckle right under your left eye. You are just love and and mushy and yeah. Yeah. Well, oh. I, God, what was I gonna, oh, um, like, Alai and Misha both have, like, both vocalized, like, how well I do in this, like, community, and, like, the other night at the fire, Alai was like, I hope that you find communities like this everywhere you go, because you fit in so well, like, you're such a great, like, um, addition to, like, this kind of environment, and I remember getting here being so insecure that I wasn't, like, flowy enough, because, Same. like, I have a certain diet and a certain like I'm introverted and I need like a certain amount of sleep. And I was like, do I not fit in because of like this? You're the code. (laughs) You are the, you are the missing ingredient, both because you're assertive and clear, which just wants me into that. And, (laughs) and you're specific. Like that's, I mean, that's the spiritual trap of like oneness and we're all one. Like, Oneness is recognizing specificity and separateness. And yeah. that's the solar plexus magic. Like, yeah. solar plexus says, I am this, I need this. This is who I am as a fragment of source. And you, if you aren't respecting how fucking specific you are, then you're doing, it's actually divine disrespect. Like, mm. you're, that's, and that's what's helped me. Of course, that's what I had to get to, <laughs> to get me to change my codependency. I couldn't just do it on, like, nurturing myself. I had to be like, I am defying my defi- my divine duty by like playing into codependency. But that's what it came to. It's like if I'm I'm here to to speak for this vessel and for the the freedom and like the rights of others to have needs and wants and mm. like to to create right relationship in communities. And you can't do that if you're if you're giving into your you know, desire to be a mm-hmm. good person, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. 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 And it is like, too, I spent so much, uh, this 2020, I've spent so much time working on my own personal shadow, but then like, I guess looking at things that maybe the love and light community would shy away from. And that is like the paranormal and ghosts and like I mean, mediumship and just like the shit that like, you know, death scares humans as a collective which is absolutely ridiculous but um also well, i struggle scary. with it oh my god death is so scary i i i find myself i don't know if it's like having a scorpio parent or having a scorpio stellium but like i am so into death like i, I feel, mm. yeah like i my dad is having a hard time grieving the loss of his dad i think it was six years ago but it's like he brings it up all the time and I'm finally at a place in my life where it's like him and I can really like talk about it and Mm. like it just I like to show him that like you know they're the the world as we experience it is a liminal space we're all in between something yeah and he was and anyways and and like I have this thing too like um and and a dead animal obviously like fucks me up you know and I think it obviously it makes most people sad but I think like I'm not going to say it fucks me up more. It just fucks me up. And, but I have this thing where I really want to like look right at it. Like look at their dead Ooh, body. Oh my God. That's, I'm, that's crazy that you brought that up because growing up, I, I went to this like very, like a, a public school, not very well cared for, underfunded, mm-hmm. you know, um, this is between five and 10 and there were so many dead animals on the property mm. and my childhood was so like such a theme and like recurring image of my childhood was animal carcasses, dead Ooh. bugs, dead. And it was New York city. So it was gross, like dead roaches, dead mice. One of the most defining moments of my childhood, I saw 
like a, a mother pregnant rat got run over by a car and she was like split open but she was still alive like I saw oh my god we would like find chicken like or not chicken pigeon feet in the schoolyard and just pick them up like we we were we were just so face to face with this like dead animal shit yeah and it, I don't know interesting yeah I mean you tell you saying that that's I, I feel like I get traumatized by every time I see an animal die. Yeah. Um, it is a I don't, little T trauma, I guess, but... Um, no, but it's... I think it it's like a very... What, I, what I'm hearing from you and that I think I feel is that death as a concept doesn't really bother me. Like, when mm-hmm. someone in my life passes, I tend to grieve it a bit less than people around me because I can mm-hmm. feel their spirit still there. Yeah, yeah. But, but for me, the act of... When I was a kid, it wasn't like this as much because it was just my world. But now, I think you've seen me. If I see a dead bug, it scares me in this, like, I don't know. It's like a deep spiritual fright seeing Mm -hmm. a carcass of anything. Mm. How'd you do with that scorpion today? It was hard for me. It was hard for me to be around it, even though it was still a bit alive. Yeah. There's something just, like, really, like, weird about dead animals. And I... I don't know where that that's going to go. Like, I feel like that's something I need to process. But yeah. Yeah. And I mean, any any death. Yeah. Physically. Yeah. I think like seeing death. Um, I, I don't like seeing things that are on the brink of death, like an animal mm. that just got hit or like a bug that is on its way out or something like that. Yeah. You know, like that, like that space where it's like it's definitely going to die. Yeah. Um, that liminal. But yeah, the, the concept of death, it doesn't. It doesn't bother me because I don't really, like, I don't, it's like, I don't really buy into it. You know, it's definitely, I'm like, eh, you, whatever. Also, don't you feel like you're dying every second? Yeah. As a multiple being. I die being. constantly. Yeah. Every yeah. second. Yeah. I'm and dying, then, like, yeah. So I'm experiencing, I'm experiencing death in a way that, like, was not introduced to me until I got into, like, deeper into, like, I guess a spiritual community. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, I, I only thought death was one thing. And I even, like, hesitate to be like, oh, I die, I've died a million times or something. Like, I die whatever and I, I hesitate to say that to certain people because like we just have so much like built up like don't talk about death you know yeah. we are not death and it's like um two things that are guaranteed I, I said this to my dad and I was like we we have like two we have multiple things that are like guaranteed in this life but it's like death and breathing are one or two things and it's like we only ever focus on the breath Yes. We never focus on the death. And it's yeah. like, that's poetry. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it is, it's like we only focus on the living, the life as a, as a collectively as a society. And I do think that it has to do with like being, you know, in America, it's like a predominantly like Christian society. I mm-hmm. think that there's, there's part of that. It's like, you don't want to talk about death. It's like something about like death and Satan go hand in hand. And it's like, nah. I don't know. It's like, it's, it's just, it is, it's more than I think we're going to digest and in this too conflict. much distortion too much distortion <laughs> um well i'm feeling like we should go back to work now yeah probably <laughs> is that the hold on oh no i didn't know if i could hear the bus was on we have friends that are leaving the hippie commune today and they're on their way out isaac and still. yeah i know okay <laughs> <laughs> I know they're leaving in their little green bus in their green van. Um, yeah. Well, thanks so much for coming on. There's so much more that I wanted to talk to you about, but I know there's that... like every time you said something, like I had ten things come up. It's almost like timelines of conversations. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like, yeah, because I wanted to talk about like your body work, like in how you see energy and stuff. But where I I really am bad at closing a podcast. Mm. Um. Do you want people to find you? Do you yeah. want people to, like, find your Instagram or, like, your yeah. whatever? Okay, my... Do you talk about services you offer and stuff or if you do or whatever? Um, yeah. Well, my... I have an Instagram and I share downloads, uh, but the name is in flux right now. So, depending on my mood, it might be <laughs> <laughs> at Cosmos and Psyche. Um, or right now I think it's at creature underscore on underscore fire. Did you just change it? Yeah, I changed it yesterday (laughs) (laughs) and I might change it back. I'll tag both of them. Okay, cool. And, um, yeah, I have a link tree that offers 
things. If you're called to work with me, you can just DM me. I'm not officially offering things right now, but I like to talk to people. Mm-hmm. Um, she's good at it from what you guys can tell. Oh. At least with me. I mean, I don't uh, know. We've done some cool... We've never done a session. We just... I feel like we just process together. Yeah. I'd be down to do a session. Yeah. Um, Energy exchange can be, I can just give you money. Yeah. Or like, whatever. I love money. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, well, we're going to go shovel poop or eat a salad or both. Both, probably. Both. We love you guys. Bye. Bye. Oh, shit. How do I stop it?